Hi, this is Adam from Inflectra, and in today's video, we're going to be taking our requirements plan that we built in Spira Team, and we're going to be generating our test plan, so we can test all of these requirements. So if you're in the project we created last time, you'll need to go to the testing, test cases section, and this will be initially blank, because we haven't got any test cases or test folders. And uh, Spira Team lets you organize your tests by folder. So what we'll do is go into the test folder section in the top left, click on the add button, and since there aren't any folders, there's no parent, uh, we'll then give ourselves a new folder name that we're going to use. And for this one, I'm going to use functional tests. And for those for watching this video for the first time, if you have the Spire Team Quick Start Guide printed out, you can have that next to you and you can follow along with everything I'm doing today. So I've got my functional test folder, which I then select. And now I'll create my first test case. And because the folder is selected, I'm in that folder, so the test case will get automatically created in that folder. You can always drag and drop test cases into different folders if you forget to do that. So click on the button here, New Test Case. And we'll change the name from New Test Case to something like Tests the Ability to Create New Users. Hit Enter on the keyboard. And there you go, you've now got a test case. Now that tests the creation of new users, and if you remember, we did have more requirements than that, so let's create a few more. So the next one will be test the ability to edit existing users. I'll do save and new, just to save one click. Test the ability to delete users, and then test the ability to edit notifications. And so we've now got four test cases, and they're all listed as not run, because they haven't been run yet. They're all listed as draft. You can change the status if you wish. And you can set up different workflows if you want to have different statuses where you can only run them in certain statuses. That's all customizable. Um, but what we'll do first, though, is go in and add some test steps. And the steps are the actual actions the tester will use to carry out the testing. So you click on the test case, you'll notice that we have a name of the test case at the top. Uh, we've got a description field, the type, component, priority, and you can edit these fields. And when we scroll down a bit, we're going to get to the test steps. These are the steps the test would actually carry out. And each step comes with a description of what should be done, the expected result if it works, and some sample data. And by default, Spire Team will create a single test step for all new test cases so they can be executed. And there's an option to turn that off in the administration if you don't want that feature. And one thing we can also do, first of all, is just add an objective. Um, sometimes it's useful to have an OV for your test case. So we'll write that in here. It's something like, you know, this test step verifies that you can add new users to the system and all the fields get saved correctly. So it's explaining exactly what the objective is. Hit save. So we scroll down again. And now what we'll do is create some steps and edit the step that we already have. So we're going to edit the first one, first of all, hit edit, and we'll replace that with more information, which will be click on the link to create a new user. And the expected result will be the new user screen is displayed. Hit save, and we're going to add two more steps, so we'll set another one, and this time it'll be Enter the name, email address, and password of the new user. And the expected result will be the data is accepted. Hit save and new. Third one, click on the submit button to create the new user and the expected result will be the user is created. Let's save. Now, if we want to have any sample data, we can also do that. We just hit the edit button, go back into here, and we'll edit the sample data. We'll say that the new user to be created is Fred Blogs, and his login name is fredblogs at aol.com, and his password is change me. So we now have a test case with a description and three steps. So what we need to do now is link this test case back to the requirement so that we can tell the system that we have got a test case that will correctly cover that functionality. That requirement has now got a test. So we go into requirements coverage, do add, choose our package, or we can just simply navigate to it. So it's in module one, it's right here, and it's the one that will allow the entry of users. So we choose that, and we hit save. 
and you'll now see the list of requirements updated to include that one requirement. And you can have more than one test case linked to a requirement and more than one requirement linked to a test case. It's a completely many to many relationship. So now for the other test cases, you also should add, should add steps. And uh, in a real project, we'd recommend that you would go through and add a description and steps for each one. Now, because the system already generates one step, uh, we're not going to bother with that. We'll just leave those with their default step. But in real life, you would go in here and probably add more information. And if we go back to our list of test cases, you'll notice that we now have test cases with steps. The icon here shows we have steps. And if you go to planning requirements, you'll notice that we now have a test case linked to this very first requirement. That's why it has this gray bar. The other ones still show not covered. So we want to link those requirements to test cases. So we can do it from the other direction as well. We can go in here and just click on requirement and we can go to test coverage and we can then look at our folders and we can choose the current folder, functional tests. And this is the modification of users. So we'll find the matching test case, which is the edit one, which is this one, hit edit, hit save. The next one is the deletion of users. So we need to add a test case to that. Add that, save, go to module two. Uh, this is the administration one, notifications. We do have a test case for that. Hit save. And so now we've got one test case assigned to every requirement. If you go back to our requirements list, we now have test coverage 100%. And you can prove that by saying, do I have any requirements that are not covered? The answer is no. Do I have any requirements that have no tasks? You can see that as well, no. So that's very helpful. So now that we have our test cases entered and we have the test coverage with the requirements established, we also need to link these particular test cases to different releases. So which versions of the system can we test them in? And if you go to the quick start guide, we have a handy reference that shows you which test cases can be run in each release. Uh, what I'll do is just simply enter them in right here. And it doesn't matter too much. You could use the different ones that are in our document. But based on what's in the quick start guide, the ability to enter new users is part of release one, iterations one, two, and three. So let's go here. The ability to create new users, we'll choose the option here, check, add to release. We'll choose the release, release 1.0, iteration one, hit add. And in fact, if we want to do that for uh, the second one, we do the same thing. We can go right here. But there's, a, there's also a quicker way. We can go into the actual item and we can do a multi-select. So if you've got lots of releases to add, it's almost quicker to go in here, go to the releases tab, choose add, and now you can do a multi-select. So I actually want to add this particular test case to all three sprints and the release itself. So we'll choose save. We'll go to the next one. And this one is the ability to edit existing users. Oh, sorry, that's this one. And that's also in, in all three sprints. The third one is the ability to delete. And that's only in the second two sprints. That's not going to be ready yet, but in the first sprint. So that's easy enough. We'll go in here and we'll add that to sprint two, three. Hit save. And because I chose the release, it does actually add that one, so I should not do it that way. I'll remove that one out, easy enough. And the last one is the ability to edit notifications, and that's only in the third sprint. There we go. So we've now added the test cases to the release. Now you can check that's the way you want it by going back to test cases, and you can change the selector from all releases, which shows you everything planned in the project, to show me what's planned in iteration one, these two, great. What's planned in iteration two? These three. What's planned in iteration three? Right. So I know what's testable at each stage in my release. So I don't try testing things in sprint one that just aren't ready yet. And that way helps your testers understand what needs to be tested and when it needs to be tested and when it can be tested. So we've now, just to recap, we've now created our test cases. We've written some steps. Uh, we've used the auto generation steps for some of them. We've linked these test cases back to our requirements for test coverage. We've also linked them to the sprints and releases for our sprint plan. So we now have our test plan defined. In the next video, we'll be showing you how you can use the planning boards to actually do the next level of planning, where you can actually plan out what functionality is coming in each sprint and each release and assign to different people. So until then, thanks for watching and see you soon.